what's the most gruesome thing you've seen in real life? I was 10, and these two high school girls ran past me. One of them stepped out into the street without looking and got run over by a car. It's been over 20 years, and I can still picture it clearly, and I can still hear her friend's screams. My first EMT call when I was just out of high school. Guy on motorcycle straightened a curve and hit an RV head on. He flew through the windshield and out the back of the RV, leaving a cartoon-esque perfect person-shaped hole out the back. The motorcycle was embedded into the front of the RV. When I got there, he was on his back, bleeding from every hole in his head. I tried to check airway, but his head felt like a bag of broken glass. It's the creepiest feeling. You can almost hear the bones grinding together, but really, you're just feeling it through the skin. Of course, he wasn't breathing and no heartbeat. I tried to get air into him with a pocket mask and it wasn't going in. I repositioned to try harder, and when I blew harder, his brain started coming out of his ears and other holes in his head. He was done. So was I. In Portland. I worked as a vet tech at a busy animal hospital. We had an emergency hit by car come in. I ran up front and grabbed the dog from the owner, an Australian cattle dog who was wrapped up in a blanket. Run him over to the oxygen machine and began getting vitals. The doctor and other techs came over to assess the damage. He didn't look that bad. Then we removed the blanket he was wrapped up in. His one back leg was only bone and some ligaments, no toes, no skin, no fur. It had been completely degloved from the hip down. I could see some of his veins pulsating. He had so much road rash on his belly that he had zero fur left, all skin and blood. He had his leg amputated and made a full recovery. When I was 20, I had to tell a close family friend that their kid had been hit by a car. They were out with my parents. I had found out, so I had to tell them. The kid died. His head had been run over. I eventually got a call that it was bad and that it didn't look good. An hour later, I got the call that it was over. This was a 10-year-old. The family, as you would expect, was destroyed. And so, yeah, they invited us to the wake and funeral, of course, but also the brief and private open casket portion of the wake. I guess they wanted close family to get to see him one more time. Yeah, it was not good. He was mangled, unrecognizable. I told the parents he looked great, of course. Maybe he did. I wasn't there while he bled out on life support, but it was really, really brutal. It being closed casket was the correct decision. So that was gruesome. The thing that will haunt me forever, though, is the kid's mom. I've never seen, sensed, heard, or felt grief like that in my life. The sound she made for close to eight full hours was the saddest, most horrifying thing I've ever witnessed. She would calm down occasionally in the receiving line, and then the next relative would arrive and it would start again. I stayed for the whole wake. My god, the screaming. It was primal. I don't even mean to sound dramatic. I will never be able to forget it. I can still hear it to this day, over a decade later. When I was about 10, a car crashed into a tree up ahead. It was two boys who'd stolen a car. Neither had their licenses yet. My friend's mom told us both to wait in the car while she stopped and went to see if they were okay. But my friend convinced me to sneak over and have a look. Never regretted something so much in my life. I only saw one boy, but his face was barely recognizable as a face. The airbag hadn't gone off on his side. I ran back to the car and covered my eyes. I don't even like thinking about it. When I was younger, my dogs ran free in the woods for most of the day. There were random strings of barbed wire between some trees in my woods, why I don't know. I knew where they all were by heart. One day, my chocolate lab, Big Fatty, came home with the skin reaching from his armpit to his butt, just dragging on the ground covered in leaves and gore, probably a 1.5 by 1 foot square flesh hanging on by one side. He had clearly been running through the woods and gotten skinned by barbed wire. He seemed not to care, and there wasn't much blood, but I could see his muscles and ribs moving. I was panicked and thought he was going to die. Took him to the vet. He got sewn up and was completely fine, if annoyed by the cone he had to wear after the stitches. I'm a paramedic, so there has been a few, but hands down the worst was the guy who fell and set himself on fire, burning himself to death. Older man would normally go into his garage to smoke a cigarette before bed. Well, he was smoking it in his robe, and fell down, which is common for old people. On the floor was some type of spilled paint thinner. I believe that acted like an accelerant and set his robe, then him, on fire. Guy was cooked. Worst part was we could clearly see the drag marks on the floor from the body where he tried to drag himself to get up and alert his wife. He knew what was happening. 
By the time she smelled the smoke, it was too late. Couldn't even tell it was an actual body at first. I would say it would be the homeless man who had two above-the-knee amputations who had been sitting in his own filth for who knows how long. We take his pants off and turn him over, and the backs of his thighs are just covered in sores and filled with maggots. That smell will be with me for a long time. Seen plenty of things, but that was memorable. Here's a tip, though. Never stick your hand in something that is metal and is or is supposed to be moving. Your hands will always lose. A decapitated pigeon with bird seed pouring out of it. My neighbors at the time were an elderly couple that put out bird feeders for the local birds, pigeons included. There was a trolley track a few blocks from our homes. I guess one of the well-fed fatties was taking a flight after a free meal, slammed into the trolley as it zipped by and bam, decapitated bird, gushing out bird seed from the neck hole like some fucked up pinata. Hard to forget a thing like that. Baseball injury. I was pitching. The horror on the faces of my friends really made me aware of how bad it was. I took a line drive to my left eye. Upon impact, I fell back to one knee. I'd been wearing sunglasses that saved my eye, thankfully, but the impact forced the frame into my face and lacerated the skin all around my eye. I started to bleed profusely all over the pitcher's mound. I ended up getting 24 stitches around my left eye patient who decided not to commit suicide but had the shotgun go off on the way out of his mouth. His face was left like a refrigerator door that could swing open to reveal his maxillary sinuses and neighboring anatomy. While driving with my family through a construction zone of a new interstate when I was younger, I saw a giant eye beam come loose while they were lifting it over the freeway with a crane and drop down to the freeway, about five cars in front of us, crushing and killing a few people. Edit. God damn, y'all stressed me out. I've literally not left my bed out of fear of crazy shit since I got home from my class today. Walking home from school several years ago, I watch an old Italian man prop up a lawnmower to clean debris that has caused the blades to stop spinning. No, he didn't shut the lawnmower off, and yes, he tied the safety lever on. I watched in awe from across the street as all of this took place in a span of 5 to 10 seconds. I didn't have to tell him to stop. I'm dumbfounded that even a teenager has this sort of common sense, but it just escaped him entirely. I waited there 20 minutes with him as I called 911 and had to call his wife and tell her that her husband had been in an accident. Many other kids were walking home, but I was the only one who had seen it. To add insult to injury, they didn't find all of his fingers, but the cop that was there put barely any effort into trying to find him. Turns out it was his friend's house that he offered to cut the grass for free grass now covered in blood with possible fingers in the yard. Yuck. When I was a new nurse, I received a post-op patient who had an abdominal exploratory lap, which basically means he had a huge midline abdominal incision from ribs to pelvis. When he arrived to our ICU, he went asystolic and we needed to perform CPR. Normally, this can be pretty gruesome as ribs crack during compressions and it just looks pretty violent. Because this man had an abdominal incision, the pressure from the compressions started to break down the retention sutures. His incision opened up and bowels started to slide down the side of the bed. Two residents were in charge of holding sheets at the side of the bed to prevent his intestines from hitting the floor. To make things worse, his left eyeball also popped out of his orbit. This poor man was basically disemboweled with his eyeball hanging down his face and his family kept yelling from the door, save him. It was awful on many levels. My friend jumping straight in front of a train. He had some issues which we knew about and were supporting him through, but he decided in that moment to end it all. I remember every detail. We were heading out and were on the train platform. He was in laughing and smiling the whole way. Well, more taking the piss out of me about my shoe and that I just stacked it falling down the stairs. The announcement came on saying the next train is not due to stop blah blah blah. He looked down the track, then looked at me, said love you, you fucking crank and jumped. I was frozen and didn't say a word, but I heard screams around me. I shut down completely, except to look and I saw blood. I heard a comment being made that someone was going to be late home, and well, the noise that came out of me wasn't human. I don't know what it was, and I had to be held back by strangers as I went to run to where he was, but I know they didn't want me to see it. So I stood there wailing until the police turned up. I was carried out, but I saw everything on the way out. I can't say what I saw but I remember pointing out his trainer and saying, 
It needs to be cleaned as he hates dirty trainers. I was sedated heavily and taken to hospital for OBS. I know what I saw was gruesome, but in the pure state of shock, I went into my brain and never processed it fully to identify exactly what I saw, and I'm grateful for that. But I do know that it wasn't pretty, and there wasn't much left intact. My friends and I were walking by a train rail yard when we were teenagers. Long story short, my guy friends thought it would be cool to see the underside of the train, so they decided to crawl underneath them. To be fair, we had never seen any of them trains move, but still. Anyways, the train my friend crawled under started moving, and so my friend freaked out and tried to crawl out from underneath. He didn't crawl out in time, and the train's wheels amputated his left leg above the knee on the spot. Not the worst one but the worst I'm willing to talk about. I was deployed to Iraq. We were conducting a raid on a suspected insurgent. If you're not aware, their houses are generally flat-roofed, and people will often sleep on them during the summer to stay cool. Well, around the edge of the roof is a three to four foot tall wall. As we roll up to the house, we immediately start taking fire from a guy on the roof. A couple of my guys return fire, and the shooting stops. When we get to the roof, we find the guy. Turns out the bullet hit the wall first, causing it to tumble before hitting his head turned the top of his skull into a canoe. The damnedest thing was, the guy was still alive for a while. He was just laying there in a pool of blood and brains, looking at us and trying to talk. There was nothing we could do to save him. Shit sucked. I didn't actually see what it looked like per se, but I was described it. When I was a kid, about four to five, I was hopping around my house on a large rubber ball. As I turned the corner to my kitchen, I slipped and tore my chin open. There was blood pouring out and I tried to cover my chin to stop it. It just leaked out of my hands, and with me constantly wiping my face, I stained my face and hair with my own blood. My mom let out the most horrifying, blood-curdling scream I've ever heard. She got a towel and wrapped it around my head to stop the bleeding. Her, my dad, and I rushed to the emergency room as the blood kept pouring out. They rushed me into a room so they could stitch my chin back together. They had to tie me down so I'd stay still, and I eventually passed out from blood loss. When I woke up a few hours later, I was in my bed, fully bathed with my chin stitched back together. I never saw this, but apparently I fucked it up so bad that I not only exposed the bone, but I dented the bottom of my jaw. I still have the scar, if you can even call it that. It's more like a small chunk missing on the bottom of my chin. I'm sure it was worse for my parents as they saw the whole thing unfold, but being covered in your own blood as a small child is horrifying. I once had a mouse infestation in an apartment building I lived in. For whatever reason, my dad decided to use sticky traps. What he would tell me to do is take up the trap and dip it in the toilet to drown the mouse and toss it away. I did not like this idea. It made me feel horrible. For a while, what I would do instead is use pliers to gently pull them away from the trap, then flush them. Honestly, I don't know how it was any different, but I felt better doing it that way. Until one day, I was going a bit too fast and literally skinned the mouse in one pull with the pliers. From that day, I told my dad that he can deal with them when he gets home. I'm not doing it anymore. I'll just leave them on the traps. Our old family dog had a tumor on the inside of his back leg, on the ankle joint. It ended up growing so fast, he had long hair. By the time we saw it, the vet hardly had any skin to stitch together after removal. We took him home from surgery and tried every kind of cone, bandage, etc. to keep him from chewing the stitches. Well, a few days in, he chewed out all the stitches overnight. We brought him back to the vet. They closed the wound again. Then that night, the dog wiggled out of the cone and chewed it open again. Except that time, he chewed all the way around the joint and degloved the leg down to his foot. Like, I can see the bones and every tendon kind of degloving. I was 14. I loved that dog. So for days on end, I would sit on the bathroom floor with that dog, sterilize the huge wound, roll the skin back up, bandage it, and then sleep on the floor with him to ensure he didn't chew. During that time, the bathroom floor would be covered in little dry spots of blood, and it worked. But it didn't change the fact that I had to roll my dog's skin back up his leg every time he chewed it open until it healed. <laughs>